Although I'm a huge KISS fan, I can also say that not every song from them is a priceless gem. In fact, some tracks are just plain filler, if not worse. So in this video, I'll go through one track from each of their 20 studio albums, give a little background info on the songs, and tell you why they're the runts of the litter. So, you wanted the worst, you got the worst. Stay tuned. So yes, I am a KISS fan and have been since 1983 when I bought both Creatures of the Night and Lick It Up at age 15. As such, I probably even love a whole lot of their songs that are otherwise not as well loved by former and even current fans alike. Some of those would include Naked City, Two Timer, Under the Rose, and probably a lot of others too. And that does make me want to stress that these are tracks I consider the worst on a given record and not necessarily bad songs, though a few of my choices might just be both. But yeah, worst and bad are not always synonymous, especially in this video. Anyways, before I start, I do want to point out that I won't be covering the band's live records, compilations, or solo albums here. I know you make me rock hard absolutely should be on this list, but since it's on a comp that's largely a greatest hits album, and those other tracks are already on the albums I will be discussing already, it doesn't make sense to include albums such as smashes, thrashes, and hits. I'm also going to be quoting lyrics from most of these songs because in many cases the lyrics heavily contribute to why they're even on this list. So with that, let's get to the tracks. First up is track 6 on their self-titled debut studio album released February 18th, 1974. This is Kissin' Time. So, this track was actually not on the initial pressing of the record. Uh, due to lackluster sales, their label thought it would be a good idea to have them record a cover tune that promoted the band, namely this Bobby Rydell track from 1959. Uh, also, this was actually released as a single first, which is unimaginable were it not to have actually happened. Sometimes I'm truly shocked that Casablanca didn't run this band into the ground, especially in the early days. Uh, a couple months later, the label did put the track on subsequent pressings of the first album, which might be why you might be familiar with it. Uh, also against the wishes of the band. Great. Uh, three of the four band members sing on this one, which means that Ace Fraley is the smartest guy in the band at this moment. Worst lyrics, definitely in the chorus. Uh, they go, Cause any time is a kissin' time, USA. So treat me right, don't make me fight, and we'll rock and roll tonight. So the worst song on KISS hands down is Kissin' Time. Next is track 5 on their second studio album Hotter Than Hell released on October 22nd 1974. This is Let Me Go Rock and Roll. Uh, this was also released as a single. In fact it's the only single from Hotter Than Hell which is ludicrous when you think of all the killer tracks from this record that weren't singles. I mean you got Parasite, Hotter Than Hell, Watching You, Coming Home, and so on. Worst lyric obviously in the chorus it's cause baby's got the feeling, baby wants a show, baby won't you tell me, baby rock and roll, yeah yeah. So not the worst lyrics but it does remind me that Gene says baby way too many times in this song. 16 times actually. I also felt that the band visiting this old timey rock and roll sound which is even old hat by 1974 was a little strange and doesn't fit with anything else on the record. It definitely feels like a throwaway track. It is a really short song though at 2 minutes and 17 seconds which also means that it's the shortest song on my list so that makes it not so bad. Anyways the worst song on Hotter Than Hell is Let Me Go Rock and Roll. Next up is track 4 from their third studio album, Dressed to Kill, released on March 19th, 1975. This is Getaway. This is one of a number of songs that Ace Fraley wrote but was too chicken to sing on, which would be the case until Shock Me on Love Gun. So Peter sings this one instead. Uh, if you check the credits, Ace plays guitars and bass on this, and with Peter on the drums, that means Gene and Paul have absolutely nothing to do with this track. Pretty interesting. Uh, worst lyric, I know I have to go, got no dough, should I stay or should I go, gotta get away, don't want to stay, leaving tomorrow, by Subway. 
It's not too bad lyrically, but not great either. Uh, the chorus is painfully simple, even for an early Kiss song. I suppose in some respects it has a similar vibe as Baby Driver from Rock and Roll Over, but nowhere near as good. Uh, to be fair, I've always liked Peter's voice, and I don't have a problem with it here. I just feel the song lacks a great deal when put up against the others on this record. So anyways, the worst song on Dress to Kill is Getaway. Next is track five on their fourth studio album, Destroyer, released March 15th, 1976. This is Flaming Youth. So, the problem really begins with the actual song title. I mean, even in 1976, the term flaming is a definite homosexual reference, which is not what this song is about. I mean, no judging here, but of course, it's a wee misleading, especially for a band that's known for its intimate dealings with the opposite sex. Uh, yes, also, this is a single, uh, the third single from this album. Uh, hell, Do You Love Me is a way better track, and it wasn't on any single, which is crazy. Anyways, worst lyric, how flaming youth will set the world on fire. Flaming youth, our flag is flying higher and higher and higher. Could be a rainbow flag. Who knows? Anyways, an unfortunately named track that likely solidified the impression that Paul was, as they say, batting for the other team. As for the music, it seems to be an attempt at an anthem, but it's very weak in that capacity, and the chorus is just way too peppy. Had this not been on Destroyer, I would have gone with Sweet Pain, another side to track that feels like filler, but Flaming Youth definitely beats that one out by a hair. So the worst song on Destroyer is Flaming Youth. Next up is track 8 on their fifth studio album, Rock and Roll Over, released November 11th, 1976. This is See You in Your Dreams. You know, although impossible to be actually intentional, I do love this song starts with the party's over and baby's in the corner, because all I can think is nobody puts baby in the corner. Yes, an 80s movie reference for some of my fellow old people. Enjoy. Anywho, one thing that bugs me a little about this song is that it's largely the chorus over and over again with only a little bit of verse lines. Uh, worst lyric from the verse lines is, and you get in bed, you cover your head, my letter to you is signed. I mean, what is that? I mean, Gene likes to turn a phrase here and there, as you, if you will, and trust me, we'll get to a whole lot more of that in the 1980s, but it's kind of awkward here. Anyways, this just feels like a song that was hastily thrown together and churned out. Not awful, mind you, but weak when compared to the rest of the album. Uh, Gene would also redo this song for his 1978 soul album, so he must have felt at least somewhat confident in it. Then again, that solo album also has such stinkers as Living in Sin and Tunnel of Love on it, so there's that. Anyways, the worst song on Rock and Roll Over is See You in Your Dreams. Next is track 10 on their sixth studio album, Love Gun, released June 30th, 1977. This is, of course, Then She Kissed Me. So, another cover tune, this time done by The Crystals originally back in 1963, but with a gender swap title. And of course, I already discussed this track on my Out of Place Songs on Kiss Albums video, but it's also the worst track on this record, so we're going to talk about it again. Anyways, worst lyric is, Then I asked her to be my bride and always be right by my side. Felt so happy she almost cried, and then she kissed me. I don't know, is it the worst lyric ever? No, but it's way too schmaltzy, and yes, even for Kiss. And yes, I just said schmaltzy, because Gene and Paul. Anyways, and is this just an excuse to sing their band name in a song again, like in Kissin' Time? I mean, this is pretty much Kissin' Time Part 2 in some ways. I don't know, didn't we learn the first time? Anyways, there are so many strong album enders for this band, but this is pretty much the weakest. I mean, you've got Black Diamond, you've got Rock and Roll All Night, Make and Love, and this song? Yeah, not even trying. So the worst song on Love Gun is Then She Kissed Me. Next up is track four on their seventh studio album, Dynasty, released May 23rd, 1979. This is Dirty Livin'. So this album has a few tracks that don't exactly measure up. Both of the tracks Fraley wrote are a tad weak, but also mindlessly fun in some ways. 
but Dirty Livin really sticks out for me on this record. I mean, by contrast, I feel that Gene and Paul seem to have the stronger songs of the record, so Peter's song also kind of fails by comparison. Um, as for lyrics, it's not the lyrics that are bad on this track. I, in fact, I think there's some of the best lyrics in a song Peter Chris ever sang. And I say that because it's unclear whether Peter or his co-writer Stan Penridge wrote the lyrics, but they are good nevertheless. Very gritty, nasty, street-level stuff. Uh, the track not only is the most divergent track on Dynasty, but perhaps even in the entire Kiss catalog. It is way more of a disco song also than I Was Made For Loving You. I mean, way more, even down to the beat. I mean, I know Peter's a jazz guy, and jazz can be easily converted over to disco with a few instrumentation changes. Uh, Herb Alpert and Manhattan Transfer, excellent examples of jazz and disco getting along quite well. Also, and I might be stirring the pot here, I know the lyric is, I take my fury out on the street, but it more than sounds like Peter says Fuhrer instead of Fury, which brings to mind De Fuhrer which might make me wonder if Peter's taking yet another shot at Gene and Paul here, because as we know, he and Ace have taken similarly themed shots at these two Jewish fellows in their band. Quite a few, actually. So this is the only song on Dynasty in which Peter even plays. Uh, a session drummer Anton Fig took over the rest of the drumming. Then again, this is likely the time when Chris had simply checked out on this band, and Dirty Living might be a product of that. Not sure. Anyways, the worst song on Dynasty is Dirty Livin'. Next is track 10 on their eighth studio album, Unmasked, released May 20th, 1980. This is Torpedo Girl. So right away, that's not Gene on bass. I mean, let's be honest, Simmons could never play that bass line on his best day. Rather, that's Ace, and he's not a bad bass player. Better than Gene, clearly. Uh, past that, this track is downright goofy, and that's saying something when it shares album space with Shandy. Of course, this is the album you really see a proliferation of outside writers coming in, notably producer Vinny Poncia, who has co-writing credit on seven of the 11 songs. I mean, he produced the album, might as well have him write some songs too. Anyways, worst lyric is, But I knew when I was in the suds and swimming around. Then all of a sudden, I heard this rumbling sound. I saw this thing that looked a lot like a submarine with a pretty girl on the bridge. Could this be a dream? I don't know. That's actually the lyric. I don't know. Um, also, I laugh every time Ace shouts, come on, get your feet wet. Still hilarious. And also another song in which Gene and Paul don't appear. It's just Ace and Anton Fig. Like Dirty Livin', both tracks give the impression that they're meant more for solo projects than for Kiss albums. Be it as it may, the worst song on Unmasked is Torpedo Girl. Next up is track 10 on the original version of their ninth studio album, Music from the Elder, released November 10th, 1981. This is Odyssey. <laughs> so yes, yet another cover song, in case you didn't actually know that. It was originally written and performed by Tony Powers as part of a track called Midnight Trampoline slash Odyssey. Uh, there's even a music video for the original version right here on YouTube. You should check that out after you watch this. Uh, this track on The Elder is truly conspicuous in its awfulness. It is also wildly out of place on the record, which is why it too was on my Out of Place Songs on Kiss Albums video. So yes, another plug for that. And yeah, this is a song that I will sing along to at the drop of a hat, but will also laugh hysterically while doing so. So a veritable feast of emotions here, I guess. Uh, the track also sounds a bit like musical theater. Uh, that is, it was meant more for a Broadway play than a rock album. We know Paul got into doing theater later on, so maybe that was the initial appeal of this track for him. Can't really tell. As for lyrics, we all know what the one is. It's in the bridge, and it's, There's a child in a sundress looking at a rainy sky. There's a place in a desert where an ocean once danced by. There's a song in the silence weaving in and out of time. We are notes in the music searching for remembered rhyme. Which actually rhymes. How about that? Anyways, I know some people pick Just a Boy as worst song on The Elder, but there is no way to ignore the white elephant in the room that is this track. No contest. So the worst song on music from The Elder is Odyssey. Next is track two on the original version of their 10th studio album, Creatures of the Night, released October 28th, 1982. This is Saint and Sinner. 
So right away, this was a really hard choice because I love this album and don't consider any song on it to be thoroughly bad, but if I have to pick the track that has the least impact, even if it's not bad, then it's got to go to Satan Sinner. So minus the scant verse lines, there is a whole lot of lyrical repetition throughout, mainly variations on the chorus lines. Seems a pattern for Gene in this period of the band. I don't know, is he just getting lazy? Are outside projects a factor? Maybe both. Who knows? Worst lyric, hands down, is the single line, cross my heart and hope to cry. I mean, that's awful, Gene. I would actually prefer one of his sexual innuendos, for which he's rather famous, than have to deal with that terrible line. As with other tracks on the list, Satan Sinner pales in comparison when you think of the amazing tracks on this record. Again, Creatures of the Night, I Love It Loud, War Machine, even the ballad I Still Love You, easily the best and most heartfelt ballad Paul ever wrote, beats this song. All of them do. And you know, I gotta wonder if this is why on the 1985 reissue, Satan Sinner is pushed to the back of the record and Killer is put in its place in the track order. Maybe they no longer had faith in it either. Who knows? I mean, it's on Creatures, so I don't hate it, but it is truly eclipsed by the rest of the album. There's just no denying that. So anyways, the worst song, comparatively speaking, on Creatures of the Night is Satan Sinner. Next up is track 10 on their 11th studio album, Lick It Up, released September 23rd, 1983. This is And On The Eighth Day. Uh, this is literally the song I skip most times when I listen to this album. I mean, technically, since it's the last song, I just stopped playing the album after Dance All Over Your Face, which I love for some weird reason. I don't thoroughly hate this final track, but it easily is the weakest on the record, and I'm not always motivated to hear it. And much of it is basically the lyrics. Uh, speaking of, the worst lyric is, you sold your soul and virginity, you can't rape a heart of gold, yes, you're born to rule, it's destiny, and now it can be told. I mean, that should be awesome, but it's just lame enough not to be. And this is one of the eight songs out of ten that Vinnie Vincent co-wrote, and his other tracks here are fantastic, so I'm not sure what happened. Uh, do we blame Gene again? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, Vinnie and Gene wrote Not For The Innocent. Holy crap, is that song awesome. So, a bit of inconsistency here. Overall, it just feels like this was tacked onto the end of Lick It Up to fill out the record. I've also felt that if this song wasn't on the album, Lick It Up would be my favorite Kiss album rather than Creatures of the Night, because it does drag the record down just a smidge. So the worst song on Lick It Up is End On The Eighth Day. Next is track 5 on their 12th studio album, Animalized, released September 13th, 1984. This is Lonely, is the Hunter. So first off, I'm pretty sure that at no time whatsoever in 1984 was Gene Simmons ever lonely. I mean, come on. The man is how many Polaroids of groupie conquests? Right. Anywho, it's tough to isolate one part of the lyrics as worse because the entire song is a verbal disaster, but let's give it a shot. Eggs in one basket, but she threw me a bone. She was dealt a full deck, but she likes to live alone. Ain't just talking to myself, need a reason to stop. With a flower in her teeth, she drained the last drop. I mean, that's like a machine gun full of metaphors there. Thanks, Gene. Anyways, I will admit that I'm a bit conflicted on the line, girls love money like bees to honey, because there's something kind of awesome about that nonsense. This is definitely Gene probably thinking more about his next business deal or the next movie tryout or mixing someone else's album, but I don't feel like he's thinking about Kiss here. I mean, I might also say something similar when we get to the next track. In fact, count on it. I mean, he doesn't even play bass on almost half this album, which also points to, to Simmons not even giving more of a crap, but we do get an uncredited Bruce Kulick solo on this one. No, not Mark St. John is wrongly written on the record. That is actually Bruce. And you can hear that it's his solo too. Great solo, by the way. So the worst song on Animalize is Lonely is the Hunter. Next up is track four on their 13th studio album, Asylum, released September 16th, 1985. This is Trial by Fire. So writing and singing on this one is all Gene, and this is still the checked out Gene during this time. Uh, he was starring in movies, he was producing records for other bands, and basically absent from Kiss to a larger degree. So we get songs like this. As for lyrics, basically Gene finds a few dozen ways to say he's going to get what he wants and no one's going to stop him. I mean, the whole song is this. Likewise, the music for this is lackluster and Gene clearly didn't try hard to contribute to this record in general. 
but especially with this song. Of course, he's also partially responsible for Any Way You Slice It, which is a decent track with some real punch to it, so at best he's somewhat inconsistent. Anyways, the worst song on Asylum is Trial by Fire. Next is track six on their 14th studio album, Crazy Nights, released September 21st, 1987. This is My Way. So Crazy Nights pretty much has the reverse problem that Creatures has, which is a plethora of less than great tracks instead. I could have easily gone with Bang Bang You or When Your Walls Come Down or Holy Crap Girl, Good Girl Gone Bad, but the high watermark for schlock in this album has got to be My Way. Of course, we all know that Paul had to do the lion's share of work on this record because, again, Gene wasn't around much. Seven of the 11 songs are co-written by Paul, whereas Gene gave minimal effort to four songs. Save Thief in the Night, which is actually decent and a respectable album ender. Uh, Crazy Nights, in general, also suffers from the production and input of Ron Nevison, who is simply poison for this band. I mean, he turned a lot of rock bands into synth-laden pop acts, including Kiss on this album. I mean, Reason to Live sounds exactly like something off Heart's self-titled album from 1985. Another Nevison production, incidentally. But we're talking about My Way. So here we go. Worst lyric, here it is. Here in the danger zone, it's a jagged edge we climb, but if you take it like stone and stand on your own, you can make the grade in time. You know, if I had it <clears throat> my way... I would have ditched this track entirely and replaced it with a track that was actually on the Crazy Nights demo session but got rejected by Nevison, and that's the song Sword and Stone. It's a killer track that would have improved Crazy Nights considerably. So the worst song on Crazy Nights is My Way. Next up is track 5 on their 15th studio album Hot in the Shade, released October 17th, 1989. This is Read My Body. So it's pretty known that a lot of this record is a collection of Gene's and Paul's separate demos, so it's very bloated and not at all cohesive. Despite that, I do enjoy most of this album, but also agree that the fat needs to be trimmed off of it. And nothing on Hot in the Shade is fattier than Read My Body. Um, Hot in the Shade also has way too many outside writers on it. I mean, eight of them, actually, which can only add to the lack of cohesion. Speaking of which, Read My Body was one of two tracks co-written by Bob Galligan Jr., who is better known for writing Celtic tunes as well as contemporary Christian music, uh, the latter which is made funnier by the glut of sexual innuendos in this very track. Uh, incidentally, he also wrote Rock You for Helix, which is a way better song than this one. Worst lyrics, of course, they're in the chorus. It is, read my body, are the letters big enough? Read my body, do you like the book of my love? Read my body, turn the page, get to the good stuff. Yeah. Anyways, this is definitely the disastrous collision of innuendo and bad metaphor, and yes, I feel like I'm reviewing a Spinal Tap album when I say that. So the worst song on Hot in the Shade is definitely Read My Body. Next is track four on their 16th studio album, Revenge, released May 19th, 1992. This is Spit. So the song is basically about Gene wanting to bang fat chicks, and you know what, more power to him. Bigger ladies need some loving as well. Also, only six outside writers on this album, which is better. Uh, one of those was former Kiss guitarist Vinnie Vincent, who helped write the clearly plagiarized I Just Wanna, which borrows heavily from Summertime Blues, if that isn't really obvious. As for Spit, the writer was Scott Van Zen. He co-wrote the song. Um, he credits this track right away on his official website biography, so he's certainly not ashamed of it. That's kind of cool. Uh, worst lyric is... I need big hips, sweet lips, make a man out of me. The bigger the cushion, the better the pushing, most definitely. And this is likely the point where I'm going to re-invoke Spinal Tap, because big bottom, anyone? Yeah, definitely a bit of deja vu here. Anyways, the track isn't bad, really. I like the punch of the verse riff a bit. I dig how the track starts with the riff quickly leading to Gene's vocal lead-in. Overall, Revenge is a great album. I mean, it's not as great as Creatures of the Night, but still worthy enough to make my choice a bit tough. So relatively speaking, the worst song on Revenge is Spit. Next up is track 12 on their 17th studio album Carnival of Souls, The Final Sessions, released October 28th, 1997. This is I Walk Alone. 
So this is what is often referred to as Kiss's grunge album, and there is some truth to that, of course, but unlike others, I do feel the effective marriage between some of these influences and the core Kiss sound works a whole lot of the time. Maybe I'm alone in that, I'm not sure. Uh, this track was co-written and sung by guitarist Bruce Kulick, his first and only time singing on a Kiss track. It is a fledgling effort at best, and thankfully he went on to pen better songs outside of this band. Also, Bruce plays bass on exactly half this album. I mean, where's Gene? Again, who knows? And believe it or not, the lyrics aren't the problem with this track. Um, there is some really heartfelt stuff going on here from Bruce on a lyrical level. It just seems that the song overall is the weak spot on the album. And also, I gotta say that the backwards tape effect running through some of the song is super annoying. It doesn't need to be there. All of this is really sad to say, considering this is Bruce's final album with the band in an official capacity. I gotta tell you, a truly underrated Kiss guitarist who gave us some blistering leads and otherwise some great music. You should check out some of the stuff he did after Kiss. I say this often, uh, including his solo work and the stuff he did with Union. Overall, this is a filler track tacked onto the end of the record, which is probably as Gene and Paul intended. I mean, at least they let Bruce sing on an album, right? So the worst song on Carnival of Souls is I Walk Alone. Next is track five on their 18th studio album, Psycho Circus, released September 22nd, 1998. This is We Are One. So right away, Psycho Circus is yet another deception. I mean, despite Ace and Peter being in this reunion lineup, Ace only plays on two tracks, and Peter didn't get to contribute much more either. So there it is. Anyways, you have five other musicians filling in the gaps, including future Kiss guitarist Tommy Thayer, as well as former Kiss guitarist Bruce Kulick. So is it really a reunion album? Not really. But maybe the good news here is that we now got outside writers down to five, which might seem like something. I'm not sure. One of those is Kulik, of course, so whether you consider him outside might be up for debate. I think at this point he is. Worst lyric? I don't know. I mean, the lyrics are as bad as they are repetitive. I mean, you and me, I am you, we are one, we are one, etc. Uh, Simmons wrote this one by himself, and again, he's just not trying much. Uh, this was a single, believe it or not, the second one off this album, and it did chart in Scandinavia and Australia, but that's about it. Uh, it's fair to say that Gene's ballads are often kind of touch and go, and this one is definitely low bar stuff. Further, it's a ballad about the fans, which isn't as interesting to me as it might be for some of the more rabid members of the Kiss Army. Anyways, the worst song on Psycho Circus is We Are One. Next up is track 10 on their 19th studio album, Sonic Boom, released October 6, 2009. This is When Lightning Strikes. So after an 11-year period of endless live and compilation albums, KISS finally puts out a studio record, this time without Ace and Peter, but rather with Eric Singer and Tommy Thayer. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure it was worth the wait. And don't even get me started about how ridiculously expensive vinyl copies of this record are now. Still don't understand that. Anyways, there are a lot of substandard songs here, so choosing was tough for that reason. I do dig I'm an Animal a bit, though it's a clear nod to the sound and style of the Creatures of the Night album, so maybe I'm being played up to a little bit there. Kind of worked. Unexpectedly, I did dig the Eric Singer track All for the Glory a little bit. Singer is a good singer? Yeah, that's still weird to say. Also, Paul's voice is pretty gone by this point, which is really apparent on every track he does on this album going forward. Interestingly enough, the track I take issue with has Tommy Thayer singing on it instead. Worst lyric is, I'm alive, got the power inside, go into rock, they call me dynamite, high voltage, running free, release the storm that's inside of me. And you know what, the track isn't just lackluster compared to the other subpar tracks here, it's actually lackluster on its own. It's also towards the back of the album where again the non-Gene and non-Paul songs tend to get shoved since around the time of Hot in the Shade. Is that an accident? Is that Gene and Paul? Who knows? Anyways, the worst song on Sonic Boom is When Lightning Strikes. Next is track 9 on their 20th studio album Monster, released October 9th, 2012. This is Out of This World. So, three years later, we get what is likely the final KISS studio album, and a lot of the same problems with Sonic Boom persist on Monster, including letting Thayer do another track on his own. It has the exact same vibe and sound as his previous song, which might mean not much differentiation between the two tracks. Likewise, also pretty bland. Uh, worst lyric? 
I'll free your body if you free your soul. If you're ready to rock, you know the last line, don't you? I'm ready to roll. Of course. It just seems like Thayer looked for some of the formulaic aspects of Gene's and Paul's less inspired tracks throughout their history and attempted to replicate that. Basically a Xerox copy of a Xerox copy of a Xerox copy. For those who remember Xerox machines. Again, hello fellow old people. Anyways, all I can think when I hear this is, please bring Bruce back. And I'm even saying that after what I just said about I Walk Alone. So the worst song on Monster is Out of This World, which, incidentally, is not out of this world. Of course, these are only my choices for the worst song on every Kiss Studio album, but I'm sure you have your own list of tracks. Definitely let me know which ones you come up with in the comments below. I gotta say, to be honest, it was tough to find a worse track on some of these albums, especially the ones I love front to back. In those cases, I had to go with the least awesome track, even if the track is still decent or listenable. Definitely keep that in mind when you comment, of course. As for what I do with this channel, I don't just talk about KISS. In fact, I talk about KISS rather infrequently. Mainly, I do videos on metal vinyl collecting, as well as covering classic and modern metal in general. If that's of interest, definitely give this video a like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and share this video with some of your friends. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.